A big shout out to all our fans for joining us here today. Now prepare because we're about to take you on a journey to the center of the internet marketing universe, right here on the Internet Marketing Show with your host, Ed Brown. Hello folks, thank you for joining us here today. We are pleased to be discussing a topic that is very important to anybody who is operating a business online or an entrepreneur who may be trying to create an income online. Something that everyone needs to take seriously. This is cybersecurity, computer forensics, and we'll be discussing the new policies that are coming into place and into effect in 2014. So our featured guest today is an expert, a business leader, an innovator. He's sometimes referred to as the sheriff of the internet. He is a leading security and information analyst at Jurnov. Our guest here today is Eric Vanderberg. Hello, Eric. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Ed. Glad to be on the program. Absolutely. We're glad to have you today and a very good topic today and something that we really feel is going to provide a lot of value for our viewers and everyone in the uh, Internet space. So we're interested and excited to uh, talk about this topic. So before we get started, uh, do you have a little inspirational quote you could share with our viewers? Well, there, there are so many of them. Actually, I end up posting one every couple of days on, on my uh, Twitter. But uh, one that, that always kind of, uh, I guess, inspires me a bit, and especially when I think of incident response, is one from Napoleon. All right? He's a great general. Uh, he said, the key to victory is uh, concise planning followed by rapid response. And what I like about that is that you know you do a lot of planning up front. That really helps because when your problem comes up, like a data breach or some uh, security incident, you need that rapid response. Without the plan, the rapid response is uh, usually way more difficult. Or it's rapid response like a lot of people running all over the place, bumping heads into one another, not knowing what to do. So that's why I like that quote. Key to victory is a concise plan followed by rapid response. All right, excellent. That makes perfect sense, and that really is a great quote to share with our viewers today. So a solid plan in any aspect of your business is certainly important, and in the event that we experience something that's out of the norm, we have a game plan, and we're able to implement the uh, system that we've devised, and uh, that's something that we really believe will help moving forward. So if we um, could hear a little bit about yourself, Eric, and uh, if you could share with us how you came into the uh, computer forensics and cybersecurity world and a little bit about what you do as a business, that would be wonderful. Sure. Well, I guess I've been in the space for about 15 years now. I uh, started working in, in IT and uh, gradually just developed out of the, the, the IT industry this interest in information security and um, figuring out how attackers operated and how to protect against that. And I joined Jurnov about seven years ago. And prior to that, I had been teaching at a local university and uh, or a local college, I should say. And um, since joining Jurnov, I have been responsible for our information security, e-discovery, computer forensics, and uh, litigation support business lines. And what's probably most important uh, to our conversation today is that computer forensics and, and information security or cybersecurity business lines, uh, security certainly is getting a lot of the, the news today. And uh, in that, we offer services like uh, a virtual CSO. So for companies that are, are small and can't uh, afford to have a full-time chief security officer, someone who can respond to all of those compliance concerns, security concerns, and, uh, and really help drive an organizational strategy focused not only on achieving the business goals, but also on uh, the security goals. That's, that's one service we offer. We also do audits and uh, penetration testing. That's where we tend to be like an attacker. And we, uh, we actually either come in from the outside or pretend to be a, an inside user and uh, see what kind of data we can obtain from the organization. Even to the point of uh, social engineering. I don't know if you've heard of that term before. But uh, so the social engineer is basically like a, an online con artist, where they could be they could go physically into your your facility and try to uh, pretend to be someone to get your your data and information. So we uh, we guard against that as well. 
Okay, thank you. So those are a lot of complex problems that we face as a business owner, and we know that as a business owner, the most important thing for us to do is, is operate our own business and provide a wonderful customer experience for our own clients and cybersecurity, computer forensics, the legal aspects are all things that may be a little bit overwhelming to our viewers. So you've listed off some of the services. Um, could, could you briefly just list off what types of services that you are able to provide and you know what benefits a small business owner may uh, receive from having a company such as yours assist them with these computer threats? Sure. Well, first off would probably be our gap analysis. And uh, this is where we will look at uh, a number of different key areas and in information security, things like access controls and your governance, which would be your policies and procedures that are in place, the uh, awareness of your employees or just of you uh, if you're a, a one-man show, and um, then uh, some of the technology that you have in place. And we we try to identify the easiest things to implement that will have the give you the best bang for your buck. We we rank about 25 different indicators as uh, low, medium, or high, and how difficult it is to uh, implement it, what the cost is, and what the risk is for each of those elements. Gives you a great overview on where you're at in your organization and uh, helps you figure out where you're at on the security maturity model. It says, you know, are you more of a responder? Something comes in, you're fighting a fire, or are you proactive? Uh, do you have plans and policies that are in place that work for you, or are you still developing those? Or maybe you're all the way at the, the other side of the spectrum and you're really an information security leader. Okay, thank you very much. Now, in the, in the recent months, we've seen a lot of attacks on sites in different uh, services such as WordPress is a common type of a, a, a service that's used for a lot of internet marketing businesses or a lot of small business owners. When when you're setting up cybersecurity or, or setting up your security systems, do, do you actually back up a client's site or provide services that will prevent their sites from being hacked or attacked and information, you know, either their site shut down or information and data pulled from their sites? That's a good question. And uh, I'll say we, we help a client identify what they will need but we don't provide the IT services, so we, we wouldn't do like the website hosting for them, but we could tell them, here's a deficiency here. Uh, let's say this is a critical website that needs to be up. Uh, there may be, we, they may need to, to develop a secondary site or uh, have a, another site that could be brought up very quickly in case that main site goes down. Um, maybe they suffer from denial of service attacks, and there can be things that we put in place to help with that. Uh, or it could be something as simple as uh, looking at that WordPress site and, and helping them find some other themes that they need to install, not themes, uh, plugins that they need to install to be a little bit more secure or choosing the right type of hosting provider. Because uh, we've also found that these breaches, they either happen from uh, a business that you're working with, a partner organization, uh, an insider, or they're coming from that, outside, that external threat. And it's kind of uh, a, you know, a third for each of those. So those businesses you're, you're working with, like the, the provider of your website or uh, you know, WordPress itself, if one of them has a problem, then the, your data could be at risk because of it. So that's why choosing the right one is important. Okay, and just to explain to the business owner who, who may not have an understanding, what, what type of a problem could they face if they actually have customer data on their website or information or just in general, if, if your site is attacked and people gain access, what could that, you know, what type of effect could that have on your business? Well, there are quite a variety of different things. First off, uh, if you have customer information, you should uh, to make a concerted effort to determine whether you really need to keep that information. A lot of businesses are keeping information they don't really need, and then you you have the burden of protecting that information. So first, look and see if there's any information you can get rid of. Now, if you do have com information on these systems that needs to be there, uh, you need to determine whether there are any regulations that govern that type of information. So if it's health information, you're looking at HIPAA. If it's credit card information, PCI, things like that. 
And that's going to specify what kinds of controls are going to need to be, to be in place at a minimum to help protect that information. Now, if it's not any of those, then there are still some controls you should put in place, but there's not a, uh, a governing body that's, ex that's specifying exactly what you need to do. But there are some well-known standards. Uh, the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, uh, they put out a lot of different documents that, are, that will help you uh, put together the right controls. You can also talk to the provider if you're hosting this uh, with another site. You can see what kind of controls they've put in place and if, they've, uh, if they adhere to some of these standards. Now, uh, I think there was another part of your question, though, that I didn't answer. Okay. Well, let's, let's um, move to this point right here. Now, as a small business owner, people may, you know, be limited with budgets. So, now, in comparison, what, what type of services could a, a small business owner get with a small budget? And in comparison, what type of expenses could they see or liability if somebody was to attack their system, whether it's their website or their internal computer database from inside their company and actually retrieve information that they have stored in there? What, what's the, you know, sort of the, the um, difference between the expense that they may, um, you know, incur to protect their system or the liability they may have if their system's attacked? Well, that, that's a good question. So let's say that um, data is compromised and uh, we'll, it, what happens is we would call it a breach. So some personal information is taken from the system and is released out into the wild or stolen. Now, uh, if that's the case, then you need to determine exactly what information was taken and who's impacted. And then, uh, depending on the type of information, you may need to purchase credit monitoring for those people. You have to send out notifications which, of course, damages your, your um, brand and your customer goodwill. And then there's the cost of the investigation to determine exactly what that scope was. And that can be tens of thousands of dollars. Now, we say on, on the other side of it, how much does it cost to uh, secure that data and what would be the most cost-effective method? Well, if you're a small business, you may not have the funds to uh, employ a full-time security officer and that's where things like uh, a virtual or a fractional uh, chief security officer can come into play. Just like how you outsource your IT, you can outsource your information security function, bring in somebody who's uh, highly credentialed or even a team of individuals to then uh, help you plan that out, create a good strategy, and then comply with these other regulations. And that's actually a service that we do offer, the virtual CSO. Okay, now we're going to uh, talk about something that is, you know, taking a major change here in 2014. We're seeing a big move to have policies in place and legal information in place on websites, and this is something that all business owners need to have moving into 2014. Could you share a little bit of information about, you know, what needs to be on your site in general and, you know, what you know, penalties they could face what, for, for not having this in place? Sure. Well, well, first off would be the privacy policy stating what kind of information you're going to uh, retain from customers and how you're going to protect that information. Will you sell it to third parties? Uh, how will you be storing it? When will you destroy it? Things like that. Uh, second would be your incident response plan. If a breach happens, how are you planning on responding to that? And third would be uh, a, some form of risk assessment. This is a document that says we've looked at the system, we've looked at the risks that face our company, and here are the decisions we made and the rationale behind it. Uh, we decided to implement this control because of this reason. Or we decided that we're not going to perform this, this action because of this reason. And then after a breach, uh, that would be a critical document that would come into play. You know, why were these, these controls not implemented, or why were they implemented? They just want to see that there was a, a, a good faith effort put forward before the fact. Okay. Thank you very much. So we've discussed, you know, some topics on the cybersecurity side, some legal issues. Is there anything else in regards to cybersecurity that you believe a small business owner questions they may have that they would want answered in regards to cybersecurity? Uh, 
well, there, there really are a lot of them. I, I would encourage you that if you do have uh, some more specific questions, you can certainly send them to, to me via Twitter or Google Talk. Uh, we can have a, an online conversation about that. But I, I hear a lot of questions about cloud services. You know, are they appropriate? Uh, can I trust them? And you know, for each one, you're going to have to, to evaluate it, see who the provider is. There are some great resources out there. And uh, we could certainly link to some things. But uh, sites that will, will rank different providers, like Amazon's cloud services or Google's and so forth. And uh, so you've you got to do your research. Certainly, you can call in an expert to, uh, to help you make sense of all of it. There's a lot of information out there, and it can get technical. OK. Um, talking about cloud services, are people experiencing as many cyber threats through cloud services as they are through their own websites or their own internal databases? And you know, if you could touch between the three, between the cloud services, the websites, and the internal databases, where businesses will find that the, the most common threats are? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it is kind of a, there, there'll be pros and cons on both sides. So let's just say you're the company that, that decides to host it all in-house. Uh, now you're responsible for, for securing all of that data. So um, let's say you're doing it on the cheap. You just have you know, a, a guy who stops in every once in a while. Uh, he's implemented things as best as he, he, he uh, can. But there might be some gaps in his, his knowledge base or her knowledge base. And um, so that data may be a little bit more vulnerable. Now, let's say you go with the, the cloud service. Well, uh, here you have a team of individuals. They've, they've designed a solution that's supposed to be more secure and all that. Uh, however, they may be hosting this, this data for uh, a 1,000 different customers. Now, if you're an attacker on the outside and you're trying to look at targets, if they target your single company and that one server, it may be easier to get in, but they're getting a very limited amount of data. It may be worth their effort to go after the big fish, the cloud service provider, because now they get data from thousands of customers. So there's some pros and cons to both sides. Right. Thank you very much. That's a lot of insight into cybersecurity and some questions that people may have and some solutions to those. And we can always reach out to different uh, services. Juranov provides services for small business clients, corporate clients, and they're able to answer some questions and provide solutions if it's a right fit for your business and their business. And now moving into the next topic, computer forensics, I believe this would probably involve people who are more companies on a corporate level or you know a, a larger uh, small business owner, you know small to mid-sized business owners. What type of computer forensic services are typically required for a business or how do they affect the small business uh, owner? Well. So when you have an incident, uh, I guess one of our first questions is, is this something you're, are you trying to prosecute the individual who committed this crime, let's say? Uh, or are you just trying to get the facts and make a decision here, shore up the holes, and not have it happen again? And we have people who, who kind of decide to do both. But if you, are tr if you really want to use the evidence gathered in court, you have to go about it through a forensic manner. And this is a very structured approach where evidence is taken and it's protected uh, so that the integrity can be validated within the, the court system. So it, you know, everything from taking pictures of, of equipment before it's handled, documenting serial numbers, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things that go into that. Now, what kinds of cases would, would involve it? Well, let's say that uh, uh, you're running a, a marketing site and uh, one of your employees takes your customer list, goes somewhere else, and is now using that customer list. Uh, this is actually quite a, a common occurrence. Uh, you may need to sue that person, tell them to stop doing that type of business, and maybe they violate that, um, you know, some agreements by taking that data. And we would then gather the uh, uh, the computers that were used, uh, do an analysis on it, determine if that data was was in fact taken by this other individual, and then provide you with all that evidence in court so that you could uh, you could sue them. Right, very good. Now, are there other aspects of com computer forensics that are used um, maybe prior to the uh, breach? So you mentioned before auditing. Is, is there parts of the process that a business can proactively use to you know, um, 
protect their business or something that they may want to do with audits on a routine basis just to assure that their you know, systems are up to date. Well, sure. Yeah, that falls more on the information security side, being proactive on it. Uh, the, the gap analysis I mentioned earlier is, is a good approach. Also, the penetration testing, that's where uh, we will actually act like an attacker and uh, attempt to penetrate, so breach the website, and uh, we will document all the steps taken and then improvement actions so that you can avoid that. Uh, there are different types. There's the black box, which a, means we come in without any information about your company at all except for maybe a, a name. And we do all the research, figure out uh, what kinds of devices you have, and then uh, penetrate just like an attacker from the outside would. Then there are other attempts where we have some information on the inside uh, and we attempt to exploit the system using that. And then everything from the, the, there's the inside attack, we act like an authorized user. What could that user do and what kinds of controls might you need to put in place to restrict somebody who, uh, you know, you, you've been trusted up until that point when they commit a crime. And I'll tell you, there's even the people you, you think you trust the most, they run into some financial difficulties or there's uh, you know, some other external problem and, and now taking some of that data home doesn't seem like such a bad thing. Okay, and what do we typically see or what would you say would be the most common um, breach of security? Are, are these things that are attackers from the outside or is it more common that data is breached internally from the inside you know, through employees or, or users within your system? Uh, it, it's more common that it's the internal employee. Now this could be both uh, malicious, so they, the example I gave earlier, the person who, who leaves for another company and takes some company information with them, uh, or it could be accidental. Those who received that phishing email and now they provide their username and password or they're giving out personal health information in a way they're not supposed to, and it, it's an accidental. Uh, or even uh, I attempt to send a, a sensitive document to you and I start typing in ed and it goes to a different ed entirely. Okay, and in the, uh, could, could you explain some of the results as, you know, if internally your data is uh, taken or if, if the information is sent to the wrong individual such as you just had suggested that emails sent to the, the wrong web address, what, what type of problems could a business see once uh, either data is retrieved from the individual or the wrong in information is sent to the wrong individual? Well, sometimes it can be as simple as just contacting the person you accidentally sent the, the message to and saying, whoops, uh, my mistake, could, could you please delete that and make sure it's purged from your system? However, if I accidentally sent over uh, health information, I can't just call the person up and say that. I still would, but I have to now report it because it's been a true breach. Okay, and, and under that example, if, if valuable information, credit card information or health information has been sent to the wrong direction, what does that entail for a business? Is, is that a costly endeavor? Is there, is there a process that needs to take place at that point? Well, they would need to, to go through a risk assessment, which is a determination of uh, what kind of risk was, uh, is placed on the person who's, whose information was exposed. Uh, do we need to notify them? Do we need to go any further to help protect that, them from the exploitation of this information? And that would probably involve the investigation of an outside party. So it can be uh, quite expensive. And usually employees who even make a mistake like that there's usually a policy that's already been set in place and sanctions. So it's not simply, uh, oh, whoops, you made a mistake. There's usually some consequence. All right. Now, the next question is, uh, for a small business owner with a limited budget, what are the most important things that they could implement into their business? You know, whether we're, we're talking about the cybersecurity side, we're talking about the um, plan to have you know, some type of computer forensics, um, you know, even if it's just a number to dial in place, and also when it comes to audits of their system and protecting their system from being hacked uh, both internally and externally, what would be the most important things that a business owner would want to implement in their business if they were to contact a service such as Journal? 
Yeah, if, the first thing is just what you mentioned, they, to reach out to somebody who, uh, who, who's a professional in this area, like, like Juranov. And then uh, they know who to contact in case there's a problem. And beforehand, we can work out things like that incident response plan and uh, help shore up any of the um, uh, vulnerabilities that they have right away. And things like, you know, how complex is your password? I know everybody hates hearing about that, but we still talk about it. Having a complex password, changing it often, uh, that's a very common thing. It, recognizing what kinds of emails are phishing emails, uh, what kinds of information you would want to uh, discard or, or reply to. And uh, that can help prevent a lot right there. Okay, so as a, as a business owner, if they were to contact Jurnov and they were to discuss these points with you and then they were to educate themselves as a business owner, is it important for them to then go back to meet with the employees within their business and create a culture within their business where there's an awareness of what needs to happen in order to avoid these things from happening as, as a company? Would that assist the company by educating the employees? Yes, actually you hit on one of my favorite terms, culture. Um, it, so it isn't just about you implement a few things and then, hey, we're good, let's not look at this ever again. Uh, the technology is always changing, the, um, the attacks are changing, the techniques are changing. So you put some things in place, but you're going to have to revisit that. And as you said, the culture. Right. You have to educate the employees, but also show them through a series of successes that information security is something that can really benefit them and uh, that it doesn't have to uh, make it more difficult to do their job. It can be in line with it. And as a culture is developed, it won't happen overnight, but um, as that culture is developed, you'll find that employees are, rather than resisting the change, they're actually seeking out uh, new ways to help protect themselves and the company. Okay. Now, when, when creating this culture, when educating the employees of a business, if you're taking the time to speak to the company and you're delivering this message, if you are delivering the message that you are currently working and have a relationship with a company such as Juranov where cybersecurity, computer forensics, um, and audits are routine things that take place and that these are um, available to your company through the services that are being provided, and this is part of what's being discussed as a culture, would this maybe ward off uh, individuals who may have the thought of actually trying to breach that data, knowing that maybe, uh, you know, Juranov or some type of uh, computer forensic company is, is watching them, that there, there's somebody out there that, you know, will catch them? Yes, yes, it will. The In the awareness, Actually, one thing we work on is helping everybody in the organization to be responsible for information security. So this goes uh, to the fact of, of knowing what other people in the organization are doing and reporting that to um, uh, the appropriate persons. And so w when an incident happens, you don't find out about it six months later. You find out about it right away because Mary, who is in the cubicle next to Bob, who just, uh, you know, uh, did something, she notices it, and now uh, we're able to deal with the problem right away. And so as you're educated on that, Bob knows, oh boy, everybody's looking over my shoulder, and they're, they're going to know, they're not just going to look the other way or, or uh, you know, not know what's going on. And so, yeah, they're, they're certainly going to have to hide their tracks a lot more. Uh, also, sometimes you get the IT person who thinks, oh, they know it all, and after you start going through some of the uh, potential attacks and some of the things that they need to do to secure the systems, they realize, oh yeah, uh, there's a lot I don't know and I certainly don't want to attempt that thing I might have. All right, great. Now, as a company then, what we can gain from the discussion that we've just had here is that just simply hiring a company such as Juranov to consult with them to receive information that we're able to then look at our business and we're doing an analysis of our business and we make a plan moving forward for the next steps that we'd like to take to implement when that budget is available and then going back to the company and delivering that message and you know creating that culture and educating will provide the sense that you have these things in place and this will incent in one way 
prevent attacks from your internal uh, employees into your database because you actually are, are bringing this to the table and you're letting employees know that you do have a, a team such as Jurnoff in place. So something just as simple as, as consulting with you and educating the employees can be the first step that they would take. Exactly. Yeah, you summarized that very well. All right, very good. So we've discussed many different topics here over the course of the cyber forensics, uh, or the cyber security, the computer forensics, the audits, consultations, um, you know, the employee culture, educating the company, putting the thought out there that there are people watching, that the system is in fact secure, that there is a team in place to watch for breaches and protecting the company internally. All are, are things that we've discussed and these are things that you know you can find solutions for at Juranov. You can have questions answered and consult with them to develop a best business plan for your company. Would there be anything else, Eric, that you may want to share? Um, maybe some things that we haven't touched on that uh, you know anybody may have you know, just a common question or, or something that I may have missed? Sure. Uh, you know, you'll hear a lot about patch management. This is applying, you know, latest Windows updates and all of that. Uh, I'm certainly encouraging everyone to keep their systems up to date, both their virus definitions and their um, their computers. But technology itself, it changes rapidly, and there's a lot of new things that come out. But it's not always best to adopt that that latest greatest thing, because there can be um, vulnerabilities within that, that new software. It could be uh, a longer training uh, training curve, a long a learning curve, uh, longer implement, implementation time, and a higher cost to implement all of that technology. And sometimes it's best to actually wait a little bit. As long as your systems are still up to date, it's working fine. You don't have any any major uh, problems that this new software would, would solve. Uh, it's better to stay with something that's mature and something that uh, that is the sec where the security model is understood rather than something that's new and untested. All right, very good. So we see that across so many different platforms from, you know, updates with, with uh, simple plugins, updates to your WordPress installations, updates to computer systems, um, updates to anything that you're using, whether they're technical gadgets, systems, or softwares. So, you know, the, you have to find that fine balance between, you know, when it's time to update and not moving too quickly into a system. And, and so I, I would uh, guess that you would not suggest any business in, enter into a beta program to, uh, you know, try and take advantage of, of the newest and the latest and the greatest or, or maybe save some money by getting in on a beta program that in, involves, uh, you know, anything that may you know, potentially breach their system? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, not for anything production. I, actually, one of my own little horror stories is something like that, where I had worked with a company. Uh, they had a, a new product they were developing, and this was a big name company. Uh, and we partnered with them to test the, the hardware and software, and then they gave it to us at a, you know, what tenth of the cost that uh, others would pay. The only problem is, uh, the technology was new and it really wasn't the direction the market ended up taking and so they didn't sell very many of these units. We ended up being one of very few companies that actually had them, difficult to get support and we ended up retiring that unit uh, quicker than, than we really wanted to uh, in order to uh, use some of the mainstream and better supported applications and, and hardware. All right, very good. Now we've we've discussed uh, many topics here. Um, I know that there's probably a lot of questions that people have. So once again, we really recommend that you consult with a company such as Juranov or or one in your local area that uh, you know you would be able to have these questions answered. You know, be sure what's going on within your business, whether it's internally, whether it's your websites, the software programs. Anything that can be breached, anything that you know may be needed to uh, have you know the the tools in place or or the people in place to 
you know, implement the, the solution. So, you know, no, be proactive and, and know where you're going to go before it happens and, and have that relationship with, with the company so that, you know, when, when that day comes, you know, you have a relationship established and you're not put on the back burner when you're having a meltdown within your own business. Um, anything else that you may want to share with the, our viewers before we, we move into the next round uh, where we'll just be asking some questions in, in general about, uh, you know, some tips and techniques that you can offer for our viewers? Sure. Well, one thing I'd say is uh, if it's important, back it up. Uh, a lot of companies, you, you find that uh, there was important data. If you haven't been backing it up, you lose it, and suddenly you have to try to figure out how to put all that data back together again. Back it up, and then test that backup to make sure that you can really restore it and that you know the process. Uh, another thing would be if you have mobile devices, uh, don't uh, root those devices you know, or jailbreak them. You may introduce some uh, vulnerabilities and uh, uh, make yourself insecure. All right, back up. I'm sure that there have uh, been many, many uh, experiences where people have uh, shed tears or or had uh, major breakdowns and meltdowns within their business and you know uh, personal lives when you know a computer. You know, we know that things just you know simply dropping a computer, knocking over a um, external hard drive. Um, you know, uh, a flood within a building where, you know, the all the uh, computer systems and IT systems are damaged mm -hmm. and everything that your company had or some of the most important aspects of your personal or business information is gone in a flash. And, you know, this is all something that, that uh, can be avoided by, by backing things up. And could, could you possibly suggest, you know, how um, people would go about backing up you know, different systems? Sure. Uh, I'm sure you can just think about the, the pain of losing the data right now. You think about home if you lost your pictures or at work if you lost your payroll data or something. Uh, certainly you need that backed up. And some of the methods, uh, depending on what kind of solution you have in place, might be to replicate to another site. Uh, if you have a, um, a website, you may have a, uh, another site that you replicate to that can be brought up in case that site goes down. Uh, it could be that USB hard drive that's connected to a machine, you're copying off to that, and then you bring that hard drive off-site. Uh, safety deposit boxes are really not that expensive, and you can uh, you can store hard drives or tapes or whatever else uh, in those safety deposit boxes at your at your local bank. Um, there's also uh, the traditional tape storage, or you can have another uh, backup server that would store copies of the data on your local network. All right, thank you, Eric. You know, and most importantly, when when backing up data, backing up data is is very important, and we always want to back up our data offsite. So, you know, simply backing up your data and having two external hard drives sitting on your desk, or you know, having your data backed up on you know two servers within your own business is is not the best solution because it, if there's a fire, if there's a flood, if something happens in that business, if there's vandalism, damage. Um, the the backup needs to be off-site in a different location so that you know if that happens you you still have access to your your uh, files and that uh, you know one event can't destroy your original and your backup at the same time so always keep that in mind and you know that wouldn't always be with just you know computer information but anything that you're you know, trying to back up or, or save. So, Eric, we would uh, love to move on to the next round here where we're going to ask you some questions. And, you know, the first question is uh, in regards to failures. And, you know, as, as business owners and entrepreneurs and, you know, people who work in the, uh, the world of, you know, technology, we all face failures. And so is there a, a failure, a challenge, an obstacle that you have faced that you've had to overcome within your business and career? Well, I, I did mention the uh, that new technology we adopted, but also I'd say in uh, in crafting some of our uh, security initiatives, I'd say trying to figure out what the uh, the optimal solution is for a client had uh, proved difficult to us in the past. When we were first doing that gap analysis that I discussed, 
we created kind of a, uh, a standard product that we thought we could offer to uh, all of our clients. And what we found is that for some clients that was too complex, for some it wasn't complex enough, and uh, there were a lot of in-betweens too. It was kind of like the story of Goldilocks and the three bears, except here there were 50 bears, <laughs> and we were trying to serve the same porch to all of them. So what we really determined was that uh, that type of solution isn't relevant today. Companies are uh, too different. They have different culture. They have different needs, different size, different budgets. And so uh, we really partner. That's what we like to call ourselves a partner with a company uh, in understanding their business, understanding their goals, and in developing a solution that really works for them. Excellent information, and that is just a perfect example of one size fits all does not work in business, especially when you're trying to protect your data within your business, your clients' information, and the business overall. So one size does not fit all. A simple, you know, plug-in or easy to fix solution is not what's needed. So once again, please reach out to a company, you know, whether it's Jurnov or, or another country company. Consult with them, and you know, make sure that you have what's in place for your own business, and you're, you're protected. Uh, thank you very much for that, Eric. And you know, now on to a uh, more pleasant side is is success. Um, you know, could you share with our viewers, you know, an, an aha moment, a, a moment where you realized that you know something that you were doing was you know going to create great success, a, a uh, happy moment, and something that uh, you knew you were going to be able to excel. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, certainly, I get <laughs> I get pleasure out of just knowing that we've uh, we've made the environment more secure. You, know, you mentioned that whole internet sheriff thing. Uh, uh, knowing that each day we're helping to uh, protect customer and and client information. That, yeah, that uh, that goes a long way. But more specifically, I think uh, back to that uh, our culture discussion. And I know in the past we had. Uh, We've been working with one client, and we'd help develop some solutions for them, and um, you know, do the strategy, implement some some different controls within the organization, do some education, and it's kind of like an uphill battle when you when you begin sometimes if the the culture's not there. But after a while, the employees they grew more accustomed to it. They saw that it that the security changes were actually an improvement. They had, had seen some of the failures of competitors and others in the in industry, and they could recognize, yeah, actually, we're doing a much better job here. And rather than see that resistance, the whole, you know, I think the first time I ever I told somebody there to, uh, um, I think it was, uh, make a more complex password, they said, like, the hell with that, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, months later, it was, you know, I have a, a, an interesting idea, or, or uh, you know, I love the idea that you had. Yeah, they were very receptive in it, and they were even generating their own ideas. We were, had much, much more collaboration rather than uh, conflict, and uh, they were actually becoming um, a security-oriented culture. All right, so implementing a, a culture, uh, creating a culture that uh, surrounds whatever you do, the services you provide, and you know, um, I can see where that would certainly be a great feeling when you know you uh, first received resistance into the password, but then later on, a few months later, to realize that people are now taking your advice and you know they're making the longer passwords and they're happy and, and feel good about it. And sometimes people you know need a little time to uh, make those those decisions and changes. We all like to resist change, so that's a uh, wonderful information. Is, is there something you can share with us today, uh, something that you know yourself or, or Jurinov as a company or, or information that you could share that you know business owners could begin to implement into uh, business today, something that's, uh, that's uh, you know, affected and needed in today's environment? Well, yeah, I'll tell you, kind of uh, one of my initiatives for, for this year has been to uh, leverage more of some of the, the personal connections. Um, the internet is a great resource. It is. We find so much uh, on the internet. But ultimately, that's a collection of computers. And a person is still much better. Uh, so I've actually encouraged everybody at Jurinov to develop networks to uh, 
know people who can help solve different uh, different problems that we might face, and also to be a resource for them to give back to the community and to help others. Uh, so when we run into a problem, not only are you just googling it you know, or or binging it, uh, you're uh, you're contacting people who will be able to bring you to the solution right away. And that kind of goes back to us. You know, can we be that partner for your company and uh, and be that resource when you need it? Amazing insight, Erica. You know, as as technology evolves today, we we see so many people who you know communicate only online or um, on on the phone will only text. So people are, are you know beginning to be you know shut off from society and. You know, as a business, you know, or or a, or an individual, you know, create relationships, and and uh, you know that's amazing insight, and you know, uh, personal relationships and business relationships are, you know, they should be the foundation of your of your life, and you know, uh, not uh, a a cyber persona. So, um, wonderful yeah. insight. Now, would you also have a, a tip that you may be able to share with our viewers? Um, something that. Uh, you know, be, besides what you just shared there, some some types of tips that they may be able to use. Uh, you know, maybe related to security or technologies that they may be able to use and implement in their own businesses. Um, I guess there are a lot of them. You can you can keep in touch with my uh, my Twitter feed or my my Facebook, and I post a lot of updates there that that will be relevant and uh, related to to current events. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Okay, and w would you be able to share your uh, your your Twitter feed, uh, you know, with the uh, audience? H how would they contact you, or, or how would they find you? Would they simply search search for your name, or or what, is there a more pertinent method? Well, yeah, there's a couple other Eric Vanderbergs out there. Now, you know, you'll probably realize right away I'm not the poker player or the you know, guy in the, uh, the Netherlands, but uh, uh, it's just at E. Vanderberg, so that's E-V-A-N-D-E-R-B-U-R-G, and that's my Twitter. And then Facebook is, uh, I guess, pages.facebook.com slash E. Vanderberg. All right, and I, I noticed on Google Plus that you share a lot of information uh, daily in regards to you know some uh, you know tips that people could could use. So uh, Twitter and Google Plus would both be great places where somebody may find you and, and be able to you know get information that you're posting uh, consistently. Uh, certainly, I wish I was a better at updating my Google Plus. It doesn't get uh, the same. Treatment and care that my Twitter feed gets, <laughs> but uh, maybe that'll change soon. All right, so look for Eric on Twitter, and he'll co constantly be posting different updates, tips, uh, tips, strategies, techniques that you can use to protect your uh, company, and you know, advice that you may be able to uh, you know link to other articles and, and read more about. So now, uh, one of the uh, most exciting parts of the show here with the uh, Technology, the new gadgets. Uh, is there a technical gadget, a tool, a software, or something that you just would not want to go out without today in your uh, business or, or personal life? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, well, last year uh, we started implementing a lot of new open source tools, and one of them was uh, Alien Vault. Now, uh, most of you have probably not heard of that software, but it's open source, it's free and it is a uh, security information and event monitoring system. So what it does is it actually collects data from my servers, my network devices, and uh, brings it all together, analyzes it, and it can give me a dashboard and then a lot more detailed information on what kinds of threats are actually happening right now on my network. Now, I, I look at the dashboard regularly. That's really helpful for me, and I can see uh, you know, are there threats out there? If so, uh, what categories do they, they fit in? Um, where's my traffic coming from uh, around the world? And um, what kinds of traffic am I seeing? And when I say traffic, I mean, you know, is it like web connections? Do I have people trying to send me files? Uh, what kinds of, kind of data are my own users within the company looking at? Uh, are they pulling down a lot of videos or uh, transferring data? And so that, that can help in uh, determining whether something is going wrong and also in identifying 
what the problem is very quickly. And again, that's completely free. All right, amazing. I've never heard of Alien Vault before. I'll be looking at that myself, and you know, free is certainly a price tag that will appeal to many people. Uh, a great place to start for um, anyone as far as the uh, personal or, or business side, so thank you for that, Eric. We've uh, enjoyed having you on the show here today. Um, would, would you have a, uh, a book as well that you may be able to recommend, something that you're, um, you, you've read in the past, something our, our viewers may be interested in? Um, you know, I, I read an awful lot, but I can say one book I really enjoyed was uh, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, that one was, uh, was really a joy to read. It talks about what, uh, uh, what kind of critical mass is needed or, or what's, uh, what makes an idea successful. And for security, that's important because we'll say, uh, how can we get people to adopt practices that will help keep them secure? And what kind of critical mass would we need there? What kind of critical mass do you need within your own organization to affect that kind of change? Okay, thank you very much. So Eric, we've enjoyed having you on today. You've provided a lot of valuable insight into cybersecurity, computer forensics, audits, how to protect a business, consulting within your business, building a culture within your business, a really great overview of how a business may look into securing all of their data, their files, and really the first step is just to reach out to a company such as Juranov and get that consultation and just have a better understanding of what you may want to do as a company move, moving forward and, and have that number in your Rolodex in the event that uh, you know some type of breach happens, a, a question comes up, and that you um, know who to call. And you, you have, uh, as Eric said, uh, you've built a relationship. So thank you very much, and I'll let you say goodbye to our viewers, Eric, and then uh, you know we'll uh, be on to the next episode. So. Once again, here you go, Eric. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we're we're here to help. So it's a pleasure being on the, the show with you, and uh, thanks again. All right, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us here today. Reach out to Jurnov, contact Eric online uh, at Twitter, and you know follow the information that he's providing constantly every day, and really protect your, your uh, investment, protect your business and your personal assets. Cybersecurity is a big threat that uh, you know is in the uh, online world today and it's uh, unfortunately something that we always have to be aware of. So thank you everyone for joining us here today and we'll see you on the next episode.